hello friends so once again welcome you to my channel and in today's video you will see the dma operation dma stands for direct memory access so see what we know that to perform your io operation we have got three type means uh, three different types of operations in in three different ways basically we can perform io operation the first one already we have seen that is program controlled io and then in program control IO, the problem is the uh, processor continuously checks the readiness of the device. So thereby it is wasting CPU cycles in only checking the status rather than performing any useful computation. Then to remove that, we have come to what? Interrupt. In case of interrupt, what we used to do? Your this one, what is that? Uh, uh, the device that places the request that will, um, the device that wants an IO service that uh, the device itself is going to place a request to the processor. So no need to keep on monitoring whether it is ready and all. Then the third method is direct memory access. So in case of direct memory access, that context switching part will not be there. Direct memory access to transfer large blocks of data at high speed and alternative approach is used, right? We need to transfer large block of data, right? So a special control unit uh, provided to allow transfer of a block of data directly between an external device and the main memory. External device here, I mean peripheral device. So peripheral and the main memory, we will do some data transfer that to in contiguous memory location, a set of data. So we used to term it as a block without continuous intervention by the processor. Processor will not be involved in this data transfer. This approach is called DMA. DMA stands for direct memory access. So see, to do this communication, we are accessing the memory without the intervention of the processor. So it is called as direct memory access. And doing this memory access, we are doing a communication between the memory and the peripheral here, right? So see here, what we know to do any data transfer, right? So see, to do any data transfer between memory and the peripheral, see this is one peripheral, this is memory. This is peripheral, do not think that is processor. Peripheral. To do any communication, we require what? A path. Path means what? A set of IS. That is nothing but what? Bus. We require the bus, right? And what we know that the in our system, in our computer system, the master of this bus, bus means I'm talking about system bus. System bus consists of address bus, data bus, and control bus. These three set of wires we require to connect between two components to do any kind of communication, right? So there is uh, your system bus is there. Who controls the system bus? Processor used to control the system bus. Already you have seen in my previous videos, whenever processor was talking to memory, it was the only one who was giving the address. It was the one who was giving the read or write signal. Then only the communication was going on. Now see, in our DMA technique, we don't want processor to do all this burden, right? Here see, only job is what? To do some data transfer between memory and the memory and the peripheral. So, here we are removing the processor from this whole path. We are telling processor that you keep, uh, means uh, let us do this ourselves and processor will be removed from this burden, right? So whenever processor is removed from this burden and we require the bus and which is controlled by whom? Processor. Then someone on behalf of processor has to do this communication for us. And that someone is nothing but DMA controller. Whenever one peripheral is there, whenever one peripheral is there, in the peripheral we have that IO interface. As part of IO interface, your DMA controller is present. DMA controller. What is the job of DMA controller? To do the data communication between the peripheral and memory. So to do this communication, it has to place the address, it has to tell the read and write signal. So it will do that, but first it has to take the permission from the CPU that please give me the control of the system bus, then only it can do the communication, right? So here we'll see the complete story. 
DMA transfers are performed by a control circuit that is a part of the I/O device interface, and that is called as DMA controller. It has a B group. It is going to do the operation, right? For each word transferred, processor provides what memory address and all the bus signals that control your data transfer. Now see who will do that for us. Now DMA controller is going to do that for us. Since DMA controller has to transfer blocks of data, the DMA controller. So see. then what it has to do first it has to take the control of the system bus from the processor once it gets the control of the system bus then it is going to provide you the address where i am going to bring something into the memory this is my memory this is my peripheral device so from peripheral device i'll get something into memory my memory is a big chunk right <coughs> when we say the memory is 32 gb you know how many locations are there 2 to the power 35 locations are there out of that into some place you are going to keep the data coming from your peripheral device or you can transfer some data from your memory to a peripheral device depending on the direction of communication so from which location you are going to transfer or to which location the data will come for that we require the address so that address will be given by the dma controller right so see the dma controller will do the communication with consecutive memory locations so first if it is uh, the first address was supposed 1000 then the next communication will be at 1001 1002 and so on because of that it is written the dma controller must increment the memory address for successive words and keep track of the number of transfers because see it will take the permission from the cpu to use the system bus to become the master of the system bus then the communication will take place so whenever communication is take means going on we require address as well as we need to see we require the address and see this communication will take place for a set of data right so what is the length of that set that also we need to provide to the dma controller we means here i mean the processor will provide all this data to the dma controller right so next we will discuss see registers using dma operation as part of your dma controller these three registers are there inside your dma controller these three registers are there right see whenever dma operation will start we need to know from which memory location you need to do the communication for that the dma controller has one register that is starting address it will hold the base address of the memory location from where the communication will take place right so where from the dma controller will get to know that from which location i am going to do the communication that will be initially given by the processor before giving the control of the system bus right so first processor will give the starting address processor will say you start the communication with starting from address 1000 so this 1000 will be written by the processor into this starting address register right this is one second one is we need to do communication for a block of data so what is the size of my block that is word count that means how many words or how many bytes i am transferring in a dma operation that also we need to mention because see, we will do it in a loop then we should have a terminating condition of the loop and that will be see processor will give me the word count suppose word count is 64 so after 64 bytes are transferred the for each see the word count value is 64 that means 64 bytes i am going to transfer then after one transfer address is incremented and word count is decremented so it will become 63 so initially address was 1000 next the address will become 1001 1002 and so on so with this consecutive memory location communication is going to take place this is one another one is word count will be decremented for each transfer right and whenever it hits the value zero will stop the communication will not do any more data transfer so word count will give me what my stopping condition for iterating a loop starting address will give me from where i need to start the communication then another register is there status and control so see this register initially processor will tell the dma controller the 
direction of communication if this bit is one that means from, um, it is a read operation that means from memory to the peripheral the something will go from memory to the peripheral it will go if it is write that means from peripheral to the memory the data will come right so we need to tell the address we need to tell how long we need to do as well as we need to tell what is the direction of communication so processor will set all these values in the dma controller and then only processor will give the control of the system bus to the processor then sorry to the dma controller and then the dma controller will perform the operation after this hit uh, this word count value reaches zero that means whatever number of words or bytes we are supposed to transfer we have completed then dma controller will automatically set the done bit value to be one done means my operation is done with right and once the communication is over then the control of the system bus will be taken by the processor so how do processor will know that your operation is over because it is not keep on asking you whether you have done whether you have done no processor is doing its own work so once the operation is over then uh, done bit will be set to one and then the dma controller will place one interrupt request to the processor so once done bit is one the interrupt enable flag will be set to one that will enable the interrupt and then ultimately the dma controller will place a re interrupt request to the processor by setting irq bit to one when processor will see a interrupt from a dma controller it will understand the operation is over then it will take back the control of the system bus so these registers are very very important for performing your dma operation so see one register is used for storing the starting address from which the communication will take place word count register is for count how many units we need to transfer the third register contains status and control flags so read write bit determines the direction of transfer read write this is active low signal right r w is active low same i'm one signal is using if it is one that means read if it is zero that means it is write when this bit is set to one the a program instruction the controller performs a read operation that is transfers data from the memory to the io device else write operation when the controller has completed transferring a block of data it is ready to receive another command so it will set done flag to one that means my this operation is over then it will say here see 32 bit register so 30 31 are indicating the msb side 30 31 32 bit total register so bit 30 in the interrupt enable flag uh, enable flag so when this flag is set to one it causes the controller to raise an interrupt after it has completed transferring the block of data then finally the controller will set irq bit to one that means interrupt is generated when it has requested an interrupt right so here see basically we have seen the registers involved and one uh, component is required to perform the operation that is dma controller then in the next video we will see the complete story of your dma operation hope this much is understood whatever i have discussed and if you are getting from my explanations then please do not forget to uh, like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you